Hello everyone, welcome back to the Wolfpack. Today, I am so excited to tell you about this game because it is a game that has hit our table very, very frequently over the past few weeks and everyone that I've introduced this game to has absolutely loved it. Before we start, quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored at all. I did purchase this with my own money, so take what you will. Okay, so let me tell you a brief rundown of how this game works and then I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. All right, here we go. So Dog Park is designed by Lottie and Jack Hazel. It's also published by Birdwood Games. This is a set collection game with some worker placement. Your goal is to collect a pack of eight dogs. With those eight dogs, you are trying to become the most reputable dog walker in the park or in this land. Now, how this game works is we all start off with five reputation and there's this dial that allows us to bid for this starting auction of trying to get some dogs. And then our goal is to get two dogs and add them to our kennel. Your question right now is, well, Tim, how do I know which dogs to get? Well, each dog has a specific ability that activates during certain turns. They can activate when you're walking the dog, they can activate during end game, or they can activate when you're putting your dog on a lead. Let's say I'm trying to go for the papillion. I'm going to go ahead and bid maybe like two reputation, and then I'm going to put that face down. And then the next player goes, and they too are going to bid for a certain amount of reputation. And then once all four players or however many players you're playing with bids, they're going to then place their walker onto the dog that they are trying to bid for. And if there are two people competing for that same dog, you're going to reveal your bids your reputation and whoever has the higher reputation will win that dog. And then the next person is going to take over the remaining dog. From there, you repeat the process one more time. That way everyone has potentially two dogs. What we're going to do next is we're going to give our dogs treats and toys, whatever they like the most in order for us to pretty much pay for their expense to walk them. So for instance, here I have a utility dog and I have a pastoral dog. I'm going to give them both a ball because that, that is their favorite treat of choice. And then I'm going to put them here on my lead. When I do that, I'm also going to put them, I'm going to also throw a collar on both of them to know that I'm walking both of these dogs. Sometimes dogs will have a selection effect or selection ability. This is when you activate those abilities over here. For instance, when I place this dog on a lead, I can discard any resource in order for me to get a stick. Here's where things get a little feisty. Now we're all going to go for a pleasant little walk. Here's where the worker placement comes in because now what's really cool about this game is that you can pick a number of spaces that you can travel up to from one to four spaces. So it doesn't matter how many places that you move, but you always have to move forward. You also can't move back and you also cannot move into the same space as another player. So I can't go over here to where yellow is. I have to go to another space unless you have a dog that says you're allowed to go on the same space as another walker. When you go onto that specific space, you're going to generate that resource. So if I were to go here, I would then get one ball. Now you're going to repeat this process of getting resources, but Here's the kicker. The thing is, if you are the first person to finish from the dog park, you're going to score through reputation. And again, the whole point of this game is to have the highest amount of reputation. So if you're the first one to finish from this park, you get a leaving bonus of three reputation. If you're the last person to finish in this park, you're going to get a minus one for reputation. But in exchange, you're walking for longer, so you'll be able to get more and more resources. So there's a trade off here. Either you stay longer and get more resources, but lose a point or get out of the park quicker and score more reputation. And the last part of this game is that you're bringing all your dogs home and you get bonus reputation for bringing your dogs on a walk. And whoever um, has dogs that didn't go on a walk will actually lose one reputation. So there's a penalty for not walking your dogs. So to quickly recap phase one, you are bidding for dogs in this auction bidding mechanism here. Once you get two dogs, we move on to phase two, where you're going to be selecting which dogs that you want to walk. And then that's uh, where you pay for the dogs and then put them on a lead. Phase three, you're going to be walking through the park, collecting resources. This is where the worker placement comes in. And then whoever uh, gets out of the park first is going to get a leaving bonus. And whoever finishes last is going to get either less reputation or minus one if you're playing up to four players. And then lastly, you're going to be bringing all your dogs back and then getting reputation for walking your dogs and also losing reputation if you do not walk your dogs. Now, a couple other important points to note, there are end game bonuses here. So this huge chart is your end game bonus chart that starts uh, from the very beginning. And how it works is if you have the most amount of terriers, then you'll get eight points by the end of the game and so forth. 
So you get bonuses for getting a specific class of dogs. And then up top over here, these are current events that happen with each round. So you have one forecasting event that happens with every round. And last thing you should note too, is that with the park, it slightly changes from each round because this location deck is going to give you a brand new resource to add in. That way it spices up the board just a little bit from round to round. If you're enjoying the video so far and you are new to the Wolf Pack, please consider subscribing because we are 100 subscribers away from hitting 25K and I can't do that without you. All right, okay, here's what I absolutely love about this game and why I think you should totally get this because I think it's a full on staple in anyone's collection, especially if you like family games like this. If you love dogs, even if you don't love dogs, which I don't even know if it's possible or not, but even if you don't, I still think it's a really, really fun board game. At its core, it's a really fun game. Here's why. I love the selective engine building because it's really cool how your engine kind of molds as you go because you start off with two dogs, but then you can always swap out those dogs for other dogs that you get in the park as you progress later on. Because when you go to the park, there's a symbol here that allows you to swap out dogs. And even there's another symbol that allows you to peek at which dogs are coming forth and switch out those dogs for dogs in the park and therefore bring out those dogs two dogs on your board. Like just being purely a fan of the theme, there are a ton, let me tell you now, there are a ton of dogs to choose from and the variety is insane. But in terms of the game itself, there is such a huge variety in the effects too, because there are dogs that are gonna give you combos and bonuses as you pick them to put them on the lead, as you get them um, into your, your kennel, as you start walking them, and even as you score them for end game bonuses. So bottom line, I just love how you can pick and choose your engine as it grows over time and as your choices evolve. So do your ways of combining different dogs to see which ones will yield a ton of different resources and which one will get a lot of points by the end of the game. That right there is really fun and absolutely a great progressive mechanism for the game itself. I also think it's a great thing that you are getting punished if you do not walk your dogs, because if you don't walk your dogs, you're going to lose reputation and score less points as you should. The game overall plays pretty quick because each phase progresses really quickly. It has a lot of fun mechanics that play really well together because you're bidding, you have worker placement, you have set collection. There are a lot of really interesting board game mechanics here that are being played out super well to the theme. And I think that having those, having the variety of different mechanics present in the game that's very seamless makes this game so freaking fun to play. Should also mention this too, I played this game five times already. I played it three times at two and twice at four. It plays great across all player counts. I really like it too at two because, um, at two players, because there is an auto dog walker and there's super low maintenance in it. And it's also pivotal to the game because all you do is you roll that green die right here. All you do is roll the green die and this tells you how many spaces that the auto dog walker will be walking. So it's going to impede your path and that's it. So the maintenance for the AI here is important because it gives you um, room to compete to see like who's gonna get the least amount of the leaving bonus here, but also and block some of the spaces that way. It's a little more interesting to a two player gameplay, but I do enjoy it a lot more at four players. So having more players, of course, is going to make this way, way better because you're competing for all the dogs uh, in the selection area over here. And I think the end game bonus is like looking at everyone else's engine to see which dogs they are going for. That makes it a lot more interesting too. To be dead honest, there isn't really anything that I don't like about this game. If I were to be super nitpicky, I would say like the worker placement element can become a little repetitive because you are going for like the same four things each time. But like the location deck here, it slightly changes it. If I were to add on to it, and I don't know anything about the expansion to like going into this video. But if I were to make an expansion for this, I would love to see the worker placement board either expanded, like maybe there's a, a pond, like a separate board up top where you can gather like unique abilities where you can swap out your dogs more easily, or it introduces a new wild type resource. The limited amount of options you have when walking in the park is probably the only thing I have to nitpick about, but honestly, it's not a big deal because the, like I said before, the way they finesse these classic board game mechanisms, set collection, and all that into here, going quickly from phase to phase, makes it so that way you don't pay attention to just that one element because there are a bunch of different other mechanisms that play. It doesn't really, it kind of like softens the blow of how limited the choices are in the park. So other than that, like I love the game overall, as you can see, I'm a huge dog fan. So of course I'm going to love this theme. One more thing I also wanted to mention was that I love how clever the worker placement is here because it rewards you for going fast. 
but then it also punishes you if you want to get selfish and stay for more resources and lose points if you want to be the last one out. I also thought that was super clever. But overall, if you're looking for a really fun staple of a family game that plays relatively quick, if you're looking for something that is going to be quickly introduced to new gamers and also keep you on your feet as you're paying attention to what everyone else is collecting and have all these fun end game scoring conditions, then I think Dog Park is going to be a great fit for you. Production quality too, you see it here. There's nothing I would change about it. So overall, I absolutely love this game and I'm giving it a 4.8 out of five. Here's why. Dog Park really nails family-friendly gameplay that's light enough to make it super inviting to many groups of people, but the huge variety of dogs and the timing of when to use their abilities makes the game incredibly fun and really replayable. I think the worker placement aspect of it is really thematic and it's a nice segue from turn to turn, but I can see how the limited amount of choices make it a little repetitive. You're also always fighting for spots in the park and bidding for dogs and end game conditions, so the play interaction here is fantastic. Last but not least, production quality is off the charts, making it super quick to set up and play and just really beautiful to look at. Clearly, I absolutely love this game. It is a staple in my collection and I'm excited to keep playing it. I'm also a thousand percent backing it when it comes out, when the expansion comes out. So with that said, hope you enjoyed today's review. Let me know what y'all think about Dark Park Below and if you're planning to back the newest expansion. If you made it here to the very end, comment hashtag Luna for my, my beautiful Pyrenees that, you know, keeps me very entertained from day to day and also uh, makes my recording time 10,000 times longer. You probably hear verbal barking with every single video, but you know what? It's fine. For her, I will make an exception. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.